Week one is here. It's time. We've been talking about the preseason forever, it feels like. Let's talk about some real football, and let's start with some quarterback start sits. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. It's time. The regular season is here. I'm excited. Are you excited? Hit the like button if you're excited for week one. I mean, regular season football is here, and we can actually talk about real games. We're not just talking about mock drafts and look at my team and what do you think. Let's start setting some real lineups here, and let's start with the quarterback position. Quarterback position is, you know, arguably one of the most important. They may be your highest point scoring, you know, position of the of the week. We got to nail these ones because if your quarterback goes out and lays an egg, you're going to be in some serious trouble. We're going to go ahead and go through some start sits here for some quarterbacks. I got three starts, three sits, but like usual, if I don't hit on somebody that you have or that you want to know about, hit me up down in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to, to help you make that decision. And before we get into the list, remember, the live game game day show is coming up here for Roto Baller, coming up Sunday, September 9th, one hour before kickoff. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Go over to the channel after this video. Hit the notifications button because as soon as we go live, you're going to want to know about it. Tune in. Watch us streaming all over the place, and we'll answer your, your last-minute roster advice questions there. But for now, let's talk about some starts for the quarterback position. Let's talk about quarterback start number one. And let's just have a nice little chat about Phillip Rivers, somebody who's constantly disrespected year in and year out come draft time. He may actually be your quarterback two on your roster right now. But the dude needs to start this week. He's at home, the home opener for the season, against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs, who have the current 28th rated secondary in football, nothing to really you know strike fear into the opposing offense's uh, game plan. And Kansas City's you know got one of those offenses that could also be explosive. And why does that matter? Why does the Kansas City offense matter to, to Phillip Rivers? Well, if Kansas City can go out there and put up some points, it's going to cause Phillip Rivers to have to continue to throw. If they take it a big lead there in the first half, Phillip Rivers can just turn around and hand the ball off to Melvin Gordon all second half. That's not going to help your fantasy team if Phillip Rivers is starting. You want Kansas City to continue to score in this game, and if they can put up points, Phillip Rivers keeps throwing, he keeps getting you more fantasy points. There you go. Now they did just sign Antonio Gates. It's kind of weird that they just did it right now. It kind of hurts the value of Mike Williams a little bit, but all it does is help Phillip Rivers. It gives him another red zone target that he has a lot of chemistry with, and that's all we care about with this you know, initial pick. Phillip Rivers is a great start for the week. Uh, over the past four home openers, he's averaged 300 yards and three touchdowns. That would be great for your fantasy lineup for week one, and that improved offensive line and solid run game only opens up the passing game even more. Just because we disrespect Phillip Rivers on draft day doesn't mean you should disrespect him week one. I'm starting Phillip Rivers. Let's stay in Los Angeles and talk about Jared Goff. Now, at this point last year, I was making fun of Jared Goff. I think at one point I called him Eli Manning's mini-me or something. I don't know. I mean, the kid just looked totally lost. Apparently, that was all Jeff Fisher's fault, and he turned it around and had a great season last year. But before we start talking about Jared Goff, what happened in Oakland? Can any of my Raiders Nation people out there tell me what is going on? Is there something in the water? Are, are, there, are there chemtrails falling over Chucky's off? What is going on? I don't get it. They basically just gave away Khalil Mack. Traded away draft picks, got Martavis Bryant, then they cut Martavis Bryant. They come, the average age of the players in Oakland are like 41, it feels like. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting Jerry Rice to hop out there on week one. I just don't understand what's going on. But it only helps Jared Goff. There's all kinds of you know disorganization and upset players in Oakland right now. And now Jared Goff doesn't have to worry about the pass rush of Khalil Mack. Oakland is the uh, 24th rated pass defense. Not a whole lot out there. And that offense, the second year now, the Sean McVay offense with the Rams, is going to be deadly. Now, I know last year they had a similar style player with Sammy Watkins, and they didn't really use him. Well, they went out and got Brandon Cooks, and then they paid him. They're not going to pay him that much money just to have him run a go route every time. He's going to be involved in the offense. You also have Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, who was one of the top targets in the red zone last year. We don't need to talk about Todd Gurley. Even if something happens to Todd Gurley, they have a great backup with John Kelly. It's just going to be a great offense once again for the Los Angeles Rams. Last year, Jared Goff had nine games with double-digit touchdowns and only threw more than one interception in one game last year. The guy came a long way in one year. Now he's in the second year of that offense. He's a very safe play, very minimal risk this week. 
I love some Jared Goff, and as crazy it is to say it, I would start him. Let's head to Cincinnati and talk about Andy Dalton for a second. They're going to be on the road in Indianapolis playing the Colts. But before we get started with this one, I want to play a quick game. Rules to the game. If you don't know the answer, you got to hit the like button on the video. So here we go. I want you guys to tell me one member of the Indianapolis Colts secondary. On your mark, get set, go. It's all right. I'll wait. I'll wait. All right. Well, a few of you probably said Malik Hooker, but let's be realistic. The only reason you know that name is because it's funny to say. Not striking fear into the opposing offenses at all. Now, they added John Ross to the wide receiver two spot, it looks like, for the year, and that's going to be great. You know, his elite speed and elite talent is going to help alleviate some of the pressure off of A.J. Green and help give Andy Dalton more opportunities. We may actually also have a Tyler Eifert sighting. It's like Bigfoot NFL style. You know what I mean? He may be out there actually playing football. may only last a week, but he still may be there, which is great upside for Andy Dalton. Just gives him another weapon. If they can commit to Joe uh, Mixon in the run game and he can be successful, all that's going to do is help Andy Dalton also open up the passing game and give him more opportunities. Like I said, this defense is weak. They have the worst rated secondary in the league, but they are playing against an Andrew Luck-led offense. Now, is it the Andrew Luck of old yet? Mm, Probably not. But if he can put up some points, it's only going to allow Cincinnati to keep throwing the ball. If that's the case, opens up the opportunity for huge home run balls to, to John Ross, You know, lots of opportunities for A.J. Green, even opportunities for uh, Joe Mixon in the running game. He's also out there catching passes also. Andy Dalton has a lot of weapons this year, and he's going up against a weak opponent. I have no issues with Andy Dalton, and I'm starting him this week. Let's talk about a few quarterback sits now, a few guys that may be in your starting lineup that I don't know if they should be. Now, the first guy I'm going to talk about is Big Ben Roethlisberger in Pittsburgh. They're going to be on the road in Cleveland. When is the last time any fantasy football show told you to sit the quarterback that's playing the Cleveland Browns? It's a new year, people. 2018 is not 2017, and that Browns defense is much improved. Now, one thing I do like about Big Ben, he's out there repping for all the dad bod, double chin, you know, dudes out there playing backyard football. And I love that part of it. But that may be where the love stops. I mean, Todd Haley is in Cleveland now. He's spent the last few years in Pittsburgh running their offense. Now, yes, he doesn't know what kind of offense is going to be like this year with a new offensive coordinator, but he's coached a lot of those guys on the offensive side of the ball for a lot of years, and he may have a little bit of insight, which I'm sure he passed on to the defensive side and Greg Williams there in in Cleveland. They may be without Le'Veon Bell. Now, I've been saying it all preseason, and I've been getting tore up in the comments when I ever talk about Le'Veon Bell, and yet he's still not here. That would be a huge loss. Uh, and it would, it would give the, the Browns less people to have to worry about on game day. It's just more attention that goes to Juju and Antonio Brown. Like I said, it's a much improved defensive Cleveland. There's guys out there making plays that you've probably never even heard of. I mean, one of their linebackers, Joe Schobert, almost led the league in tackles last year, and I bet you've never even heard of him. Not to mention the home and away splits for Big Ben usually favor home games. This one being on the road, first game of the season in Cleveland, Those fans are going to be going crazy, and if they can get off to a hot start, I don't know if Big Ben can bring them back on the road. Big Ben's a little risky for me. I'm going to sit him this week. Let's go to Atlanta and talk about Matt Ryan. They're going to be on the road Thursday night in Philadelphia. Now, if there is almost a worst-case scenario, that would kind of be it. In Philadelphia, on the road to start the season, with them coming off a Super Bowl victory, those fans are going to be absolutely crazy. And not to mention, there's just something about Thursday nights where the offense seems to to falter a little bit. It's like everybody's off their game on Thursday nights. Now, not to say that's going to happen again. It's the first game of the season. It's not, you know, the regular season when these guys get taken out of their, their actual routines. But it's still something to think about. Philadelphia is one of the best defenses in football on both sides of the ball. That's without questions. Uh, there's questions about the offense in Atlanta. A lot of people didn't care for the Steve Sarkeesian offense last year. Did they really change it a whole lot? They went out and got Calvin Ridley, which gives Matt Ryan another weapon. But how are they going to use him? We really don't know. Is he going to be in the slot? Is he going to be outside? Where is Muhammad Sanu going to play? How much of a role is Tevin Coleman going to have? We just don't know a whole lot of things. And if I'm starting my fantasy season off, I want as little risk as possible. Last year, Matt Ryan threw the lowest amount of touchdowns for a season since his rookie year. Now, until he can prove that he's turned that around, this offense is ready to 
to get things going in the right direction this year, I'm going to sit Matt Ryan, especially on the road in Philadelphia, week one. Last sit for the week is going to be Jimmy G, quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Man, it hurts me to even say it. I'm all aboard the Jimmy G bandwagon, but just not in week one. They are going to be at home, which is a good thing. But they're facing the Vikings, which is a bad thing. And we just talked about the Eagles and their elite defense. Minnesota may actually be better. They're the number six rated secondary and number four rated run defense. And they just lost their starting running back in San Francisco with Jerick McKinnon's ACL tear. Now, Alfred Morris probably steps in for that early down work, and Matt Breida takes the passing down work. But they also have Xavier Rhodes on the defensive side of the ball, and he's going to be able to take away either Garcon or Goodwin, whichever one he, he decides to cover, whichever one they put him on. Now, that's just dwindling the uh, the offensive targets that Jimmy G has. The pass rush is, is, is great uh, in Minnesota, and it could force some errant throws, possibly some fumbles. It's just a lot of risk uh, for Jimmy G this week. There are better options to start. As much as I like Jimmy G, I'm fading him in week one, picking him back up in week two, because I don't like the matchup with the Vikings this week. Hey, so those were a few quarterback start and sits here for week one. Obviously, I can't go through every single player, so hit me up down below. If I didn't cover somebody you want to hear about, or you maybe have somebody in your lineup that you're not sure if you should start or not, hit me up with their name down below in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you. I'll answer all your questions. Now, it is week one of the regular season, and I expect my inbox to be flooded this week. Be patient. I'll get to you. Really appreciate the support. Make sure you guys are checking out that Roto Baller channel. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. Week one is here. And let's get our quarterbacks. Let's get our lineup set. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.